It's no news that most African politicians are just puppets of the West. They are frequently shown shaking hands with Western leaders and complying with every request made by these countries in exchange for their own interests. But what about African leaders who refuse to be puppets of the West? Few African leaders now put the interests of their people ahead of Western agendas. And what is the outcome of this brave decision? There have been attempts on their lives. These leaders are under tremendous pressure and risk just for standing up against the West and prioritizing Africans. Traore of Burkina Faso is currently facing such a threat. However, he made a daring move that has only made Western annoyance with him worse after multiple warnings. He employed Russian sharpshooters to guard him. Will this action, though, keep him safe? And to begin with, who wants to terminate him? Let's investigate. In a world where African leaders are routinely labeled as puppets or pariahs by the West, Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso is choosing a course that defies the old script. In addition to causing a stir, his activities have shocked Western capitals, where his military investments and relationships are met with a mixture of contempt and skepticism. Burkina Faso's youthful and ambitious leader, Traoré, has been the target of several murder attempts, leading him to significantly strengthen his country's security protocols. Traoré has shifted his allegiance away from the West and toward Russia, Turkey, and Iran, investing more than $1 billion in military hardware in 2023 alone. The West has responded to this move with typical indignation. Despite this, Traoré is unrepentant and committed to preserving his nation's future in a world that frequently appears to be biased against African countries. What motivates Ibrahim Traoré to forego Western allies and make such large investments in military defense? Traoré's rejection of Western alliances and large expenditure in military protection have their roots in the history of African leaders who have faced grave consequences for defying Western interests. This phenomenon is not brand new. Across the continent, this pattern has regularly materialized. Given its past of exploitation and colonization, the West has always used forceful methods to try and keep its power in Africa. African leaders who reject the alliances of Western countries are subject to political, economic, and even physical harassment. Traoré is fully cognizant of this past. He is aware that the Western nations haven't really given up on their desire to colonize new lands. All they have done is modify their approach. In place of direct colonization, the West now maintains its hold on Africa through political scheming, economic pressure, and military involvement. Thus, Traoré's choice to reject Western ties is a planned action meant to safeguard both his leadership and Burkina Faso's sovereignty. Traoré's assassination attempts are more than just isolated violent incidents. They are a component of a larger plan to topple any African leader who dared to question the current quo. These efforts are intended to convey a very clear message. Heed Western interests or suffer the repercussions. However, Traoré is not to be taken lightly. He is aware that developing a force that can protect his country from both external and internal dangers is the only way to genuinely secure its independence. For this reason, just in 2023, Traoré invested more than $1 billion in military hardware. This expenditure is a declaration of independence as much as it is about improving Burkina Faso's defense capabilities. Traoré is addressing the West with a message. You cannot use Burkina Faso as a pawn in your geopolitical games. Traoré is breaking away from the historical dependencies that have put African nations under the control of their previous colonists by turning to non-Western powers like Russia, Turkey, and Iran. Historically, the West has used a combination of loans, aid, and military support to keep its sway over Africa. These types of assistance frequently have conditions attached. 
Ties that obligate African countries to adopt policies that advance Western interests over their own. Traoré's choice to reject this model is audacious and fraught with danger, but it also presents a chance for true freedom. There are many instances of leaders in African history who were deposed, terminated, or ostracized for defying Western demands. These events are part of the historical backdrop of Western intervention in the continent. Several African leaders who defied Western hegemony met tragic ends, including Muammar Gaddafi of Libya, Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso, and Patrice Lumumba in the Congo. Traoré's actions are a direct reaction to this tradition, which he is completely aware of. By boosting his country's military capabilities and collaborating with non-Western countries, Traoré is aiming to break the cycle of dependency and intervention that has plagued Africa for millennia. He is battling for more than just his life. He is fighting for a new understanding of African sovereignty, as well as the future of Burkina Faso. However, how does Trawara's coalition with Iran Turkey and Russia undermine the current world order? Add your voice to the total liberation of Africa by leaving a comment in the comments section below. Do not forget to like and subscribe for more informative videos like this one. Let's proceed. Traoré's decision to join with Russia, Turkey, and Iran is not only a rejection of Western influence, it is a strategic move that reflects a greater shift in global power relations. These alliances are the result of need rather than ideological alignment. Traoré's partnerships pose a serious challenge to the current international order in a world where the West still uses economic, political, and military methods to exercise control over Africa. African countries do not traditionally have Russia, Turkey, and Iran as allies. However, they oppose Western hegemony in common. Since all of these nations have a history of opposing Western powers, Burkina Faso finds natural allies in these nations. The foundation of Traoré's partnerships with these countries is respect for one another and a common goal of opposing Western dominance. Particularly, Russia has a long history of aiding African countries in their quest for independence. Russia continues to provide an alternative to Western influence in Africa. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union supported African liberation forces militarily and economically. Traoré views Russia as a partner who respects sovereignty and is prepared to offer the military might required to protect it. An important element of this cooperation is the Russian military instructors who are now educating Burkina Faso's army. Not only are they constructing a more powerful military, they are contributing to the creation of a country that is capable of defending its sovereignty against forces backed by the West or adversaries from other regions. In addition to this military instruction, Burkina Faso receives superior weapons from Russia that enable it to protect its borders and preserve internal peace. Under President Erdogan, Turkey has also established itself as a champion of anti-imperialism and a leader in the Muslim world. Turkey's strategy to challenge Western supremacy and increase its worldwide presence includes a growing impact in Africa. Turkey provides Burkina Faso, a mostly Muslim country, with both military support and cultural and religious affinities that heighten the significance of the alliance. Turkey has more to do with Burkina Faso than just military cooperation. Turkish businesses are contributing to the construction of roads, schools, and medical facilities. Burkina Faso needs this economic alliance to grow its economy because it gives the nation the resources it needs to do so without depending on Western aid, which frequently has conditions attached. Iran provides Burkina Faso with both strategic support and an example of persistence in the face of international pressure due to its long history of defying Western sanctions and involvement. Iran is an expert at locating alternate markets and creating self-sufficient businesses thanks to its expertise navigating economic sanctions. For Burkina Faso, which is constantly threatened by Western economic pressure, this knowledge is crucial. Burkina Faso may also benefit from Iranian knowledge in agriculture, energy, and technology thanks to the relationship. 
Burkina Faso's food security is improving thanks to Iron's cutting-edge agricultural methods. New energy initiatives being developed by Iranian engineers aim to lessen the nation's reliance on foreign oil. These coalitions are upending the West's hegemony over influence and changing the geopolitical terrain of Africa. They present a fresh framework for African countries, one built on respect for one another, common goals, and opposition to Western domination. This change in relationships goes beyond only collaborating militarily and economically. The goal is to establish a new global order in which African countries can claim their sovereignty without worrying about interference from the West. Trovere is also sending a strong message to other African countries through his partnerships with Turkey, Iran, and Russia. They demonstrate that forging solid alliances with non-Western states is feasible even in the face of Western pressure. The continent is responding favorably to this message, where a growing number of leaders are starting to doubt the long-standing ties that have kept Africa reliant on the West. Can Burkina Faso, under Traoré's leadership, strike a balance between its security needs and socio-economic development is now a crucial question. A critical issue facing Trohore is striking a balance between Burkina Faso's socio-economic development and security requirements. Critics, particularly in the West, believe that Trohore's reliance on military spending comes at the expense of development. They caution that money cannot be taken away from infrastructure, healthcare, education, or other vital services in a nation as economically precarious as Burkina Faso. Nevertheless, this viewpoint ignores a basic reality. It is impossible to have development without security. A nation like Burkina Faso cannot afford to overlook its security issues. The country is located in a dangerous area of West Africa, where armed organizations, insurgencies, and the aftermath of neighboring conflicts have produced an extremely unpredictable atmosphere. In addition to causing regional instability, these dangers have made it more challenging for the government to offer basic services to the populace. Traoré's choice to put military spending first in this situation has more to do with protecting his position as leader than that. It is about establishing a stable environment conducive to growth. The latest wave of violence that has engulfed the Sahel area includes the insurgencies in Burkina Faso. Armed factions, including as jihadist groups associated with ISOS and Al-Qaeda, have taken advantage of the region's flimsy borders and ineffective government to gain ground. Attacks against foreign peacekeepers, government forces, and civilians have all been committed by these groups, causing a humanitarian disaster and regional instability. To begin tackling these issues, according to Trohore, is to assemble a force that is equipped to protect the nation's borders and uphold internal peace. The $1 billion military equipment investment is a crucial component of this plan. In order to combat the insurgency and safeguard the populace, this money will be used to buy cutting-edge weapons, armored vehicles, and surveillance technologies. However, maintaining peace over the long run requires more than just military might. Trovore is aware that real security can only be attained by addressing the underlying causes of economic injustice, poverty, instability, and lack of education. This is where his relationships with Iran, Turkey, and Russia come into play. These nations offer more than just military assistance. Additionally, they are funding Burkina Faso's development. As an illustration, Turkey's participation in infrastructure development is assisting in establishing the framework for sustained economic expansion. Turkish businesses are expanding access to basic services, generating jobs and constructing roads, schools and hospitals. The goals of these initiatives go beyond building out the physical infrastructure to include establishing the framework for sustainable growth. And further crucial element of Burkina Faso's economic strategy is Iran's agricultural know-how. Due to the dry environment and restricted water resources in the nation, agriculture is a difficult but vital sector of the economy. Modern irrigation methods and drought-tolerant crops are being introduced with assistance from Iranian scientists, 
raising agricultural output, and enhancing food security. Russia is contributing to Burkina Faso's development as well. Russia is investing in energy projects that will lessen the nation's reliance on foreign oil, in addition to offering military support. These initiatives include building solar power plants and expanding the nation's natural gas reserves, both of which are essential to guaranteeing the energy security of the nation. Trovore's approach to striking a balance between development and security stems from his understanding of how closely related the two are. There cannot be development without security, and security cannot last without development. Trovore is establishing the groundwork for a wealthy and stable Burkina Faso by investing in both. Ultimately, what impressions is Trovore leaving on people in Burkina Faso and throughout the African continent as a result of his leadership style and approach. Significant discussion has been triggered by Trohore's leadership, both inside Burkina Faso and outside the African continent. He has drawn praise and condemnation for his audacious decisions to reject Western influence, form relationships with non-Western nations, and put military security first. Nonetheless, it is indisputable that Trohore is establishing a new type of leadership that is uniquely African, unabashedly sovereign, and devoted to serving the needs of his people. Many people in Burkina Faso view Trohore as a patriot and a defender. The Burkina Bay people, especially the younger generation, have found great resonance in his courage to defy Western powers and pave a new course for the nation. A vision of hope and self-determination is provided by Trohore's leadership in a nation that has seen political unrest economic hardship, and outside intervention. Trovore is seen by many Burkina Bay as a departure from the past. Past presidents have a reputation for being overly accommodating to foreign powers and for putting the concerns of foreign benefactors ahead of those of their own people. Trovore enjoys strong popularity at home because of his steadfastness in the face of outside criticism and his dedication to upholding Burkina Faso's sovereignty. This support has strong emotional undertones that stem from a sense of pride in the country and a desire for full independence, making it more than just political. Views throughout Africa are also being influenced by Trohore's leadership, a narrative that depicts African countries as reliant on the West for prosperity, security, and governance has long been applied to the continent. Decades of military operations economic policies that have frequently caused more harm than good, and foreign aid have all contributed to the perpetuation of this myth. However, Trovore is refuting this narrative by demonstrating that African countries are capable of claiming their independence, establishing solid alliances with non-Western powers, and asserting their sovereignty. Many African leaders and intellectuals are starting to question the long-standing alliances that have kept Africa dependent on the West, as a result of this message's resonance throughout the continent. A new phase of Pan-Africanism, which emphasizes independence, sovereignty, and the significance of forming partnerships based on respect and common interests, is being spurred on by Trohore's leadership. In the early 20th century, African leaders like Kwame Nkrumah, and Julius Nyerere pushed for African unification and freedom from colonial authority, beginning the continent's long history of Pan-Africanism. Now, a new generation of African leaders is spearheading a rebirth of Pan-Africanism, propelled by their determination to overcome the legacies of colonialism and neo-colonialism. A striking illustration of this new Pan-Africanism in action is Trohore's acts. Through his rejection of Western influence and formation of relationships with non-Western powers, he is proving that Africa can thrive and remain secure without the assistance of the West. This message is particularly resonant in a continent where the memory of colonialism and the effects of neo-colonialism are still very much alive. Beyond Burkina Faso's boundaries, Trovore's leadership has a significant impact. While many African leaders are keeping a tight eye on things, some are starting to act in a similar manner. There are indications that presidents in nations such as Mali and Guinea, who have also been subject to Western pressure, 
are taking note of Trohore's approach. These leaders are resisting demands from the West, seeking out new alliances and enhancing their military prowess. Nonetheless, Trohore's leadership is not without its difficulties. His defiance of the West has made him a target, and the risks of economic penalties, diplomatic isolation, and even military action are very real. However, Troore seems ready for these difficulties. His relationships with Turkey, Iran, and Russia provide him the strength he needs to resist outside pressure, and his emphasis on developing a powerful military guarantees that Burkina Faso is prepared to defend itself if needed. What it means to be an African leader in the 21st century is being redefined in many ways by Trohore's leadership. He is demonstrating that a leader can be strong, independent, and devoted to the people rather than to interests of other countries. Many people in Africa are starting to view Trohore as a symbol of optimism, resiliency, and resistance as a result of this new leadership paradigm. Now that we are well aware of Trohore's impact and the backing he receives, the last query is, under his direction, what does Burkina Faso's future hold? Under Trohore's direction, Burkina Faso has a bright future, but also one filled with obstacles. As a paradigm for how countries might assert their sovereignty in a world that frequently tries to deny it, the nation is, on the one hand, presenting itself as a beacon of African independence. However, there are hazards associated with this course of action. These include the potential for economic penalties, diplomatic isolation, and the constant threat of outsider intervention. However, Traoré's strategy implies that he is actively preparing for these dangers in addition to being aware of them. Do you believe Burkina Faso will change irrevocably under Traoré's leadership? Who is it that wants to terminate him? Will this leader also be lost by Africans, or Traoré will conquer the West? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. We explore the rich history culture, and the ongoing struggle for sovereignty in Africa. Join us in this important conversation by subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed, you're becoming part of a movement dedicated to reclaiming Africa's rightful place on the global stage. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Let's work together to spread knowledge and inspire change. Thanks for watching.